Hi, and in this video, we're going to be looking at how to handle an open ended or verbatim question on a questionnaire, how to set it up, how to deal with the uh, answers that have been given, how to code that data, and to pull it back to the main data set so that you can use it in analysis or any other reports. So let's start by putting the first question into our questionnaire, which is going to be just a standard sort of question. Question one, single response. How often do you drink? Is energy, which is the name of our drink. And we're going to set the responses here as every day, most days, some days, rarely. And never. Okay, so that's the first question on my questionnaire. And the next question now is going to be an open ended question. Before I put in the verbatim question that just asks um, for the responses, I'm going to set a dummy question up that I will be using to code the answers to when I've had a look at the open ended answers that have been entered from this survey. So let's insert another question. I'm going to call it Q2. And we're going to set that to a width of two. Let's say there's a maximum of 10 answers. The question here is, uh, what do you think of energy fizz? So that's what we're going to code the questions to. And in responses, I'm going to set using this button here the reserved responses, so I can click on that and I can say I want to allow up to 50 different answers that I want to code to, and you can see it set me up here, 50 blank response text, which I can use when I've had a chance to look at the verbatim comments and decide where I want to code people to. So let's save that question. All right, so let's put in the open-ended question itself now. I'm gonna call this q 2 oe I'm going to set it to verbatim. What do you think of energy fizz? And what I'm going to do now is go to the settings. There's nothing, no responses to put in here. It's just an open answer question. But I am going to select here that I want to code the verbatims to question two. That was the dummy question we set up just now. So you can see now that when this question's been coded, we're going to move the answers back into question two and save that. So that completes my questionnaire. That's all I want here. And I'm going to save this as uh, example open ended questionnaire. So that's my project saved here. All right, so now we could actually enter some data for this project. And one thing I've missed here actually is a question two. I want to apply one setting, which is to suspend import of question two. I don't want any answers being keyed in at question two. So I'm putting the suspend option in there um, so that no answers are collected for question two. So let's save that. And now let's put in some answers so we can make an input file. We're going to call my project test project. I'm going to go for live data entry here and we're going to say it's paper. Okay, it tells me there's no ZZ entries in here. We know about that. That topic's covered actually in a separate video. And I'm now ready to um, start on my data entry. And we'll say yes, we do want to enter some data. So let's Go. Let's do the first record. Let's say they are most days at question one. And what do they think of it? It is busy. So that's the first respondent. The second respondent, let's say they're every day, comes in a red can and is busy. And the last respondent rarely drinks it, but they like all right, well, let's say that's the end of my survey. Probably there'll be a lot more questionnaires than that. But let's save that. 
And now we can start to look at coding the answers that were entered for this open-ended question here and coding them back to question two, where we're going to actually put the coded answers. So the next thing we're going to do is to export the data. We can browse, pick our data entry and export that to an XLSX file. And here's our uh, open-ended data. So now we can code these answers here. So we could give Fizzy a code of one. Uh, comes in a red can, a code of two. Fizzy was also mentioned here as one. They haven't got to be in sequential order. And we could do light the taste as three. So we're using making code one to be Fizzy, two to be a red can, or mention of a red can, and three to like the taste. So we can save that and if we save that as a CSV file down here we can generate a data file for this project. We could also update question two at this time, go to the responses, take the first response here and we could edit the text to fizzy Take the second response, and type in red can, and take the third response, which was good taste. So that's the three codes that we've allocated. So that's now up to date. And now we can build the data file that brings back that CSV. So I'm going to merge the data. I'm going to start with an empty data file here open up the file to merge from. Well, it's that CSV file that we saved here. And I'm going to merge the data now with three records in it and save it to a new raw data file called data.ask. And there's three records. And that now is ready for doing tables in um, uh, QPS. And if we look at the data here now, here it is, data.ask. And we can see the first respondent here gave answer 2 for their frequency and gave 01 the fizzy code. Respondent 2 gave uh, the first answer most days that had two codes, which was uh, fizzy and in a red can, the code 2. And our last respondent rarely was code 4, but they chose code 3 from the open-ended question or the open-ended text was coded as three uh, to represent the third code. So we seem to have done that quite correctly and that project now is ready for uh, use for analysis, tables and so on within the project. So that completes this short video on how to handle open-ended questions and there'll be more videos in the series to follow. Thank you.